15 things that will happen when King Charles III dies. Hello guys, welcome to our channel. King Charles III may be counted on to rule the monarchy until the day of his passing, much like his mother, Queen Elizabeth. With the Queen's passing in 2022, we now know the exact blueprint of what follows after the death of a monarch. King Charles's passing will be terrible for the royal family, but Prince William and his family would expect a busy year. One immediate consequence will be that William will be anointed king. He will be obliged to numerous public ceremonies, much as we saw from King Charles following the death of his mother. Here are 15 things that are going to happen after King Charles's death. Number 1. Operation Menai Bridge there are now plans in place for King Charles III's death, just as there were for Queen Elizabeth II's, whose burial was codenamed Operation London Bridge. The codename for Charles's demise preparations is Operation Menai Bridge, named after the suspension bridge that connects the Welsh mainland to the island of Anglesey. Former Royal Protection Officer Simon Morgan revealed that preparations for Operation Menai Bridge began the day after Queen Elizabeth's death. This is because, regrettably, King Charles took the helm of the throne at the age of 73, meaning a new plan must be in place for when he eventually passes away. Many structural plans for the Operation London Bridge are expected to be carried over the Operation Menai Bridge. It is possible that future royal funerals will be inspired by the Queen's service at London Bridge, considering how smoothly it was carried out. Number 2. The family will enter a period of mourning. After King Charles's death, the newly appointed King William will announce a mourning period for the entire country. The mourning period typically lasts till the state funeral of the monarch. Queen Elizabeth's mourning period, announced by King Charles, lasted for about 11 days. The family's period of grieving lasts longer than that of the general public. The royal family will follow a set of mourning guidelines similar to the other royal protocols that adhere to their entire lives. They will be required to wear black or dark-colored clothes. They also would have to volunteer in royal engagements related to the king's death. At the time of the queen's death, Prince William and Princess Kate paid a visit to Windsor Guildhall to pay their gratitude to the organizers and managers of the funeral service. At the king's death, Prince George, or most probably Prince Harry, might be seen performing this duty. About how long the mourning for King Charles's death lasts, it will depend on the new king, King William. Number 3. Prince William will be crowned the new king It is clear that Prince William will take over as head of the monarch at the death of King Charles, as per the succession line confirmed by the royal family. As King Charles' son and grandson to the queen, William will try to emulate their examples in leading his life as the monarch. However, it's unlikely, but Prince William can renounce his throne and choose not to be king. There aren't any obvious signs he might consider this, but there are certainly examples within his own family, and therefore his decision will not be unprecedented. Edward VIII is one example, as he renounced the throne after just ruling over it for 11 months. In this unlikely circumstance, William's son George will be the next in line, with his siblings Charlotte and Louis following. Number 4. Prince George will become heir to the throne. According to Operation Menai Bridge, when King Charles dies, Prince William will automatically succeed him as monarch. As a result, Prince George is now the heir apparent and second in line to the throne. Like William did when Charles became king, George will most likely inherit his father's titles upon his death. It can be believed that William takes this responsibility quite seriously, and according to reports, he's already started to groom George into his future role. Reportedly, on George's seventh birthday, his parents decided to break the news to their son, explaining to him the responsibilities and requirements that are expected of him being part of the royal family today and when he grows and takes on a more active role. Number 5. A Completely New Succession Order after King Charles's passing, the order of the succession will be changed to reflect the current line of succession, much as it was after the death of Queen Elizabeth. Prince William will likely become king immediately, but the new line of succession will have far-reaching consequences for the rest of the royal family. According to the royal protocol, the firstborn of the heir and their children, regardless of their gender, have the first right to the throne. 
This means Prince William's children are ahead of their uncle, Prince Harry, in the succession order. And in the unlikely case that William and his children decide to abdicate the throne, the succession order dictates the heir's next oldest sibling, and their children will take on the throne. This also means that when Prince George has offspring of his own, they will be placed ahead of Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis in the line of succession. Number 6. Kate Middleton will earn a new title. From the Duchess of Wales to the Colonel of the Irish Guard, Kate Middleton has earned several titles through her 12-year stint in the royal household. Most affectionately known as the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate rose to the title of Catherine, Princess of Wales. This happened after her husband became Prince of Wales at the grandmother's death and his father's subsequent accession in 2022. As the princess is not of royal blood and instead married into the family, she will be referred to as Catherine, Princess of Wales, instead of Princess Catherine of Wales. This is similar to Camilla Parker Bowles ascending to the role of Queen Consort, rather than Queen, as she was married into the family rather than being of royal blood. Upon the eventual death of King Charles, when Prince William will take charge of the throne, to be Queen Consort Catherine will be by his side, and both will be graced with new titles. Number 7. Prince William May Get a Name Change when becoming queen, Elizabeth had the option of choosing a new royal identity to be referred by. She, however, broke the royal tradition by using her birth name at the time of coronation and throughout her reign. Similarly, when Charles became the king in 2022, he did the same. While there are examples of other royals who've chosen to do the same, history shows us that most decide to go with a new name. For example, when Elizabeth's father, Albert, rose to the throne, he opted for the regnal name George. He was referred to as King George VI after that. Prince William can follow either example, sticking with his birth name and being referred to as King William V, or taking up a new royal identity, such as King Arthur or King Philip, after his middle name. Whether Prince William will keep his current name or adopt a new royal identity remains to be seen till the king's death. Number 8. New titles will be bestowed upon Prince William's children. Once a monarch dies and a new one is announced, everyone's royal titles change. Hence, his children will be bestowed with new royal titles when King Charles III dies, and Prince William becomes the king. As reported by The Express, one of the future king's children will lose all its royal titles. Princess Charlotte will be the one to not get her new title. According to royal traditions, the monarch's eldest daughter is given the title of Princess Royal. But at present, the title is owned by her aunt, Princess Anne. In the future, she will likely be the 8th royal princess of the kingdom. She will also be second in line to throne till Prince George starts his family. Moreover, Prince George will become the crown prince, Prince of Wales, and Prince Louis of Wales will become third in line to the throne. Number 9. The King Will Leave An Enormous Fortune For His Kids Upon the death of King Charles, when Prince William ascends to the throne, he will inherit the Duchy of Lancaster. It's the largest private estate held by the royal family that includes over 45,000 acres of land, private residences, and commercial properties all over the country. The idea behind giving such an enormous estate to the ruling king is to allow him to have an independent and sustainable source of income. The death of the queen made William and Kate the Prince and Princess of Wales. This made them eligible to own $150 million worth of inheritance. This is primarily due to the structure of the royal family, whereby resources are shared according to the titles bestowed upon an individual. King Charles has already given the 135,000 acres of land of the Duchy of Cornwall to Prince William, as per the royal tradition. King Charles will be leaving behind his personal fortune along with his hefty portfolio Queen Elizabeth left behind for him. The total worth is equal to a multi-billion dollar enormous fortune. Number 10. Changing of Royal Monograms, Flags, and Insignia Royal logos and ciphers are used to symbolize the rule of a monarch. With the death of a ruling monarch and the appointment of a new one, a change in royal monograms and symbols is required. The evolution of royal monograms has the purpose of announcing the new era of the royal family's reign. When King Charles will die, all his monograms will be a part of a royal history, and the process of introducing the new one would start. King William's official monogram will be revealed to the British public to announce his era. 
Moreover, stamps with King William's portraits will be featured. The royal stamps and monograms became part of the official documents and paperwork within England and with different countries. They're even used on police uniforms, the Royal Mail's post boxes, and official buildings. In memory of King Charles, stamps with his portraits will also be released. They will most probably be released during Prince Charles' death grieving time. The use of these stamps will serve as a symbol of loyalty to the royal family. The stamp released during Prince Charles' death mourning period will be a reminder of the late king's reign and his dedication to the country. Number 11. Accession of the New King when King Charles will die, Prince William will be called immediately to succeed the throne. The reason behind immediately announcing the next monarch lies in the royal protocol and preserving the sanctity of the kingdom. Accession will be the official ceremony where Prince William will take the throne after King Charles' death. The accession will take place at St. James's Palace, in the presence of the Accession Council to proclaim Prince William as the new sovereign as soon as King Charles dies. If you take a look at the monarch's pictures of the accession ceremony, you will notice that the grief of their loved ones passing away on their face. If you're wondering who takes part in the ceremony, it's divided into two parts. Part 1, the council consisting of councillors, officers, sheriffs, civil servants, commonwealth commissioners, etc., holds a meeting without the new monarch to declare their lawful assumption of the throne. They even approve of the new sovereign's regnal name. In Part 2, the new sovereign takes an oath. In King Charles's case, Prince William will be declaring his support of the Constitution. Even though the accession ceremony is a very traditional affair and marks a joyous occasion for the nation, it does come with its own set of sadness for the new sovereign who takes the throne. Number 12. Coronation and Allegiance to the Monarch Wondering what the difference between an accession and a coronation ceremony is? Well, technically they both serve the same purpose but one is a symbolic ritual that is seen as more meaningful and ceremonial in its nature. The coronation ceremony is basically the celebration of the new sovereign's era. Just like adding a cherry on top, the coronation is the ceremony of bestowing the crown on the new monarch's head. While the accession ceremony does not give the royal family time to reflect on and mourn the monarch's death, again an oath is taken during the coronation ceremony, where the new monarch pledges loyalty to their people and swears in before them. After these ceremonies, an oath of allegiance from the Prime Minister and other government and Commonwealth officials is taken. While pledging the oath, the MPs and peers gather to pay tribute to the late monarch. These tributes act as a reminder of the continuity of the British monarchy and its impact on their nation. Number 13. Record of King Charles's Legacy A historical record of King Charles's reign will be compiled and preserved after his death. The record will include all his achievements and acknowledgement of the legacy he will leave behind. As such, future generations will be able to learn from the successes and mistakes of the past. In order to create his record, a group of historians, scholars, and the public will evaluate and study King Charles's life. How much impact did he make on England and the rest of the world? As King Charles is currently in charge of the British throne, it is difficult to fully assess his legacy at the moment. However, we can somewhat evaluate his legacy as he has been a prominent figure in the public eye for several decades. King Charles has always been known for his interest in architecture and the arts, and as a person concerned with the conservation and protection of the natural environment. His efforts towards conservation have been widely appreciated. Nowadays, people call him the Green King. He is a philanthropist, always seen involved in charity for worthy causes. It remains to be seen what impact King Charles will leave behind as a sovereign. Still, he's likely to positively influence the future of the monarchy and the United Kingdom. Number 14. Memorials and Tributes Public memorials and tributes to the late King Charles may be erected. As seen with the Queen's death, the royal family would similarly release official statements and tributes, honoring the late King's life. Public memorials would allow the people to connect and remember King Charles' legacy. Of course, King Charles, unlike his mother, wouldn't be able to serve the monarchy for over 70 years. Hence, his memorials would be different from the Queen's. Nonetheless, it will provide people with the opportunity of paying their respect. The choir singing a rendition of God Save the King would add a moving touch to his tribute. 
While the queen is remembered for her grace and poise in the face of the adversity, King Charles will be remembered for his efforts to promote climate well-being. Up till now, the image King Charles has formed of himself in the public eye is of a sensitive and eco-conscious ruler. The public has a soft corner for King Charles for his commitment to being an environmentalist. He is usually found planting trees, showing off organic fruits and vegetables from his gardening, and visits the threatened swamps of mangroves. Moreover, he gave an opening speech at the climate summit hosted last year. He said about global warming, Time has quite literally run out. This is the legacy King Charles will leave behind for his people and future generations. Number 15. The new monarch establishes their own initiatives. In his new role as king, Prince William will be responsible for a broader range of matters that are currently handled by King Charles. As per the royal family's official website, the queen undertakes constitutional and representative tasks, which have developed through 1,000 years of history. This means that Prince William, like Queen Elizabeth and King Charles before him, will be looked to as the figurehead of British nationalism. The monarchy's influence on British politics has decreased gradually, and the current monarchy believes in having a neutral take on British politics. Even though King William's schedule as king is expected to be packed with constitutional and representational tasks year-round. In short, King William will be expected to take part in several other events throughout his reign. He will be able to establish his own priorities and initiatives, deciding the future direction of the country and his monarchy. Talking about changes, he surely will have the right to make changes in his royal staff. This looks like a mere fact, but appointments in households and royal staff always prove to be significant in the life of monarchs. After King Charles's funeral procession and mourning period will end, the media and public focus would shift to the new king, King William and his family, as they would start a new chapter in the significant history of the monarch. Coming to the end of the video, King Charles's death will surely impact the British monarchy and its people. His nation will come together to overcome the sadness and grief of his death. The succession of the throne will be a great event in the monarchy's history as Prince William, next in line, will take the throne of power and guide the country into the future. The shift in power would most likely bring changes in England's political and economic landscape. So what do you guys think? What will be the most significant part of Charles' legacy? Will the current crown prince, Prince William, be able to fulfill responsibilities of a monarch in the future? Comment down below! Thank you for watching as always, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to always stay updated on our videos. See you next time!